another episode of the Easy Corner. My guest, Northwestern University sophomore, but Houston's finest. Man, his family is one of the best athletic families that come through Houston. There's still one more brother ready to accomplish a goal, but I have my man, Mr. Miller Cop. How you doing today, Miller? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be on. Appreciate you having me. And, and you, you know I got you, you know our history. And you know Absolutely. that I, I'm glad you're the second college athlete to be on the show, but you were the first one I asked. So I just want to look, I say, I said that there's if I'm gonna do a show, I say one college athlete, I said, I gotta get my boy Miller Cop because the thing about it is we don't we don't talk often, but we talk like at least twice out the year. And I always yeah. ask, you good, you good, like easy, you know I got yeah. it. So so I so I really appreciate you taking your time out and doing this for me. Oh, for me, sure, absolutely. You, man, man, it means a lot. So Northwestern, bro, you, you, you're, you're, you're there in Illinois where it's really cold, but putting in work, man, just, just, yeah. just, just to the viewers, man, just describe the feeling just being there and, you know, just transitioning into that, into that college lifestyle, even though you've already been there for one year. Yeah, so, I mean, even coming in as a, as a freshman, you know, high school and college are so, so much different. You know, you have so much – so much of a different workload in terms of school and, and basketball and, and all that kind of stuff. And so you got you have a bunch of more uh, responsibilities, but you also, on the other hand, have a bunch of uh, people around you, you know, wanting to help you and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, so the transition for me was good. And, and, and um, something too, though, that not a lot of people have is another transition from, their freshman to sophomore year, which is also what I had. And so um, in terms of mainly on the court stuff, because my role, imp- uh, you know, grew and, and I improved as a player and um, I had to take a jump in terms of the game. Yeah. And I think I did that for sure. So how much work do you believe that you put in like last summer to get to where you at now? Because I saw the numbers from four points a game now to 13, making that general <laughs> – shift that that transition shift so just talk about the work and the hours that you were putting in like because I know those lab hours in the summer that's where it started yeah no absolutely and and you you hit it like it's it's hours upon hours and upon hours I mean the biggest thing for me was I wanted to shoot the ball a lot better um from my freshman to sophomore year and so I mean my best friend in the summer in the spring was the gun and It was every day I had a I had a little notebook journal and uh wrote down all the makes I had for the day and not shots but just makes and so um in the summer really that's what it was about. It was just about um just working, you know, going we'd have workouts in the mornings, we'd lift and then work out in the morning as a team, and then we'd have, you know, summer class or two, and then I go back to the gym at night. Um and I you you've probably heard it before, it's just you just kinda living in the gym. And it just becomes a part of you. It just becomes a part of your routine, and and it's not just like a uh, you know a goal you have to do this or that. It's just like a way of life, and it's just like how you operate. And so that's what it became for me that su- that summer, and it um, it showed. I think but, but I want the people to know about you, Miller. You've been built like this. The thing about it is, so like, how do you take the intensity and the workouts that you play with and have and then how do you take it up a level after that because you're one of the, I've always said Miller Cop two words intense competitor so like like so so how do you a god that's self driven yeah. as yourself how do you take it up a level so one thing for me too was at the beginning of these this this year and and something that I really didn't ever have to deal with is is working smarter cuz I always worked you know, as hard as I possibly could, you know, push my body to the limits and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I would be, you know, at one point in high school, like I shot, like I had a terrible, terrible shooting game or something. And then on the weekend, you know, I went in the gym, you know, pack like a sandwich and, you know, some, a, you know, a meal. And I stayed and, and, and your famous shot. water and your famous water bottle, you know, you, you know, you, you, you stay with the water <laughs> and, and, and the gallon of water. And I just went in there and, I shot so much that day I gave myself like uh like arthritis in my wrist. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so carpal tunnel. Like, 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 yeah. mm-hmm. And so but it and so 
I've gotten to the point where like, I can't do that now because it just, at that point, it's just detrimental. So I've had to just kind of figure out how to work smarter. And so that's like, for me, that looks like coming up with a routine, um, like a shooting routine I have every day that I do um, and a ball handling routine. So it's more of like, I can get all my work done, especially during the season when, you know, you're playing two games a week, three, you know, traveling, getting back late, not getting a lot of sleep and all that kind of stuff. So it's hard to get in the gym two, three hours extra. And it's not smart if you do that. So for me, it was about working smarter. And, and instead of being in there for two hours, I'm in there for 30, 35, 40 minutes, but I'm like, you know exactly what I'm doing. I make a, a lot of shots. I do a lot of stuff like, but I'm still get my work in and, you know, treat my body right. I, I can see that you said like the 32, like, like, well, like, like the 40 minutes, like you said, 35 to 40 minutes, does that kind of help in the game since like the college game is 32 minutes? And, yeah. and, and how has your efficiency went up by doing that and, and, and working on that? Is that how you try to simulate it? Like you said, 35 to 40 minutes, game type? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I mean, a part of it comes down to like, however I'm feeling that day. So if, if, if like we have a long practice and we have a lift, like maybe I'll go 30 minutes or maybe, you know, we don't have as much to do that day. So I'll go longer. But uh, for me, it kind of depends on how I'm feeling, but it's, it's never more than that, especially during the season. Cause I mean, you're not going to be, I'm not going to be running around shooting for in the, in the game for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. So, but for me, it was just like, find a routine that I knew like every day, like this is what I'm going to do. Coach Collins, his expectations of you coming in, I know yeah. we're big, but I know you didn't actually exceed your goals like you wanted to do your freshman year. But yeah. to me, sophomore year, you started to look like Miller Cop again. Yeah. What was the discussion with Coach Collins this summer heading into this season? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he always had and has big, you know, aspirations and, and, you know, for me personally, and, um, you know, I have those for myself too. So coming into freshman year, it was, it, I felt like I underperformed and, you know, there were a lot of different things that you can't plan for. And, um, but going into this summer or that, that summer leading into my sophomore year is more about, um, the conversations between us were just more about becoming a better shooter. Um, and becoming, you know, a threat off the ball when you don't have the ball and, and be able to move without the ball and all that kind of stuff. So for me, though, it was it was more about just getting in the gym, just building my confidence and, and um, um, knowing that showing that, you know, I belong and that that I am who I am, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, are you still doing the stretches at night? Oh yeah, I got because it. because we know we doing this, this, this because I said the funniest Miller story that I have I said we we're on the plane so I think to L A you get up to use the restroom and you're doing form and you're doing air form shooting and I'm just like that's when I knew I said this kid's different bro like he gets up like okay I, I need to I need I need I need to work on my form so like how, man like like just being there like at Northwestern you know like the background of Illinois basketball in general, mm -hmm. not just from high school, but from college level to, to pro level. How does it feel just being there that, you know, just because are you close to Chicago? Because I don't want to say Chicago. No, like, we're like, we're like 30 minutes outside of Chicago. Okay. So like knowing that you're close to a city like that, you know, th that here, th that bravado of Illinois yeah. basketball, how does it feel to be a part of it? No, it's cool. I mean, especially, you know, I get to see it personally in the summer. Uh, when a lot of the NBA guys back, you know, NBA and, uh, you know, G League and, you know, overseas guys come back and we, um, you know, some of them will, uh, will come to Northwestern and sometimes we'll go downtown and play and, and, you know, have an open run and all that kind of stuff. So that's really cool for me to see is like all those guys be able to come back and, you know, where they are now. And even guys like last year who um, are from the Chicago area, um, you know, went to Northwestern too, so I could kind of see that with them. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the Big Ten, of course, you got your Michigan States, the Michigans, the the Indianas, yeah. um, Illinois. Like, talk about that conference and how tough is it? You, you, 
I can sit here and agree with you. You call it yeah. the toughest conference in America, and I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. put a yeah. check on that. Just talk about the grind of a Big Ten season. And the thing about it is it's not like football. You have to see everybody twice. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. so just go ahead and talk about the grind of, of the Big Ten season. No, it's tough because, I mean, I mean, we play 20 games. And so, you know, we start early and, and we'll play two conference games, um, you know, before some people have even played any, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's tough. I mean, I, I think for the past two years, it's been the best league in the country. I mean, we've had – we would have had at least in the league, you know, over 10 teams in the tournament, which is unheard of yeah. uh, for two years in a row and all that kind of stuff. So – it's tough. I mean, you're going up against guys like Cassius Winston, you know, Anthony Cowan, you know, mm-hmm. um, Xavier Tillman, guys who are all Americans uh, every night. And it's just like it's normal. It's like one night, you know, we'll play at Michigan State and then Tuesday, Thursday or no Tuesday, Wednesday, you're back. And on Thursday, we got to go to Maryland. You're playing Jalen Smith and Anthony Cowan. It's like and then. And then you go back, it's like, damn, we, then we have, um, you know, Penn State at home yeah. who has Lamar Stevens, who's like a second-team All-American. So it's like, you know, the guys you play every night, it's, it's, it's no joke. And then the, the coolest thing for me, too, is like the venues that we play at, you know, the historical, you know, arenas and, yeah. and places we play, like Indiana. Played Indiana, Michigan Indiana, State, you know, that yeah. right touch that floor and stuff like that. Yeah. Then the yeah. Venues, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's crazy. So that's a cool part too. Is is there so much history in the Big Ten? Yeah. Um, sure. just amongst your peers, knowing that you kind of had a breakout. Well, you did have a breakout year this year. How, how much confidence does that give you, knowing that you know you performed on big stages, national TV, and like you said, great venues? How like w- w- what's the limit? Because a lot of people coming out, critics kept. Like, oh, he's just a shooter. But now you're showing the country that you're an all-around scorer. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, and that's something that I really want to improve on is is being able to score at all three levels even more. And so this year it was mainly um, – I mean, even with the, the three-point line moving back like a foot and a half or two feet, like however much it was, you know, that was something that even before the NCAA, you know, changed that rule in the spring and – uh, summer and those workouts, I was already just shooting NBA threes and and just just because that's something that I wanted to to work on is being able to shoot from farther because it's harder to guard. People have to chase me out there, all that kind of stuff. So and it opens up stuff for other players too. So um, you know that was a big thing for me is being able to shoot from like thirty feet and like it's nothing. And so um, so that was something that was really big for me. And then. You know, getting to my pull up, being able to, you know, take one or two dribbles and know that my guy is chasing me, even though he's on my hip, I can still just shoot, you know, raise up and shoot right over him. So, uh, you know, what some people wouldn't say is like a great shot if it's like not wide open, you know, that's a good shot for me because, you know, whether I can create space off the dribble, whether it's like a step back or use my body to get a bump and now I create space. So, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, I've been trying to add to my game, you know, just being an all-around scorer. Man, four, uh, four years ago, I could say people didn't think that you could be in this position. They didn't think that you can be a Big Ten guy. Now you're a Big Ten guy that's averaging 13 a game. And the thing mm-hmm. about it is you're not done yet. Knowing your mindset, knowing the person that you are, I know that you're not done yet. But, like, to see where you come, you came from, from this, yeah. from, 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 from like being like a, one of the video guys, the video legend, like everybody, the next Austin Grandstaff to making a name for yourself in one of the best conferences in America. What's the answer? What's the, what's the key to the key ingredient to that success? I don't know, man. I don't know if there's a key ingredient. I think there's just, just like a culmination of, 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 just grinding, you know, working hard and, and knowing that, um, you know, that each piece connects to a larger whole, you know, knowing that it may not make sense right now, may not like happen right now for you. Um, and that was in that spot too. Um, mm-hmm. My freshman and sophomore year, I was getting injured a lot. 
mm-hmm. and you know I couldn't stay on the court really yeah. and so that was a struggle for me because I was like it's like damn like I'm not I'm, I'm working my 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 ass off and I'm not not seeing any of the results yeah. and so but I just kept my head down and keep uh you know kept working and all that kind of stuff and and uh, eventually it paid off but but there's a saying I have, it's on my Twitter bio, it's like, in due time. Mm. It's like, you just keep working in, in, in due time, it's going to happen if you're doing it right and you're doing it consistent enough. So that was the biggest thing for me. And and also, I mean, if you just look at my family, you know, yeah. we have, you know, three of us are, you know, Division One athletes already. And so um, my youngest brother, too, is, you know, hopefully going to, you know, get there, so too, so – um, you know, having somebody push you. And so luckily I have my brothers and my, my family to, to, you know, push me and push each other and hold each other accountable with what we're doing or what we're not doing. Um, because I remember like sophomore year, um, my brother, my older brother was like, he's like, what do you like, what'd you do today? And I was like, ah, you know, I worked out in the morning and then I shot after school. He was like, that's it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Played it, like, yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. And then, you know, he was like, he's like, okay, well, if that's all right with you. And I was, it kind of like put in my head, like, man, like I got to do more. Like someone's out there who, who's actually doing more than me. So that was kind of like the, the clicking point for me to where it's like, yeah, whatever you, whatever I feel like I'm doing, someone else is probably doing more. So I got to do more. And the worst part about it, is, the, the, the good thing about it is, is that like you think about that. Like, yeah. like, like, like I said, just, Go, a flashback just on the UA circuit. Remember, you're on the UA circuit. Like, you took those matchups personally because I was just okay. like, this was a different Miller because just being cast off, being a cast off, people say, can he lead a team? Can he, can, can yeah. he lead a team? So, like, does that still fuel you and motivate you after all these years? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, and it's the thing is, is like, there's different stuff. There's different things that I kind of use um, to motivate me. So, after after my, you know, summer, you know, it was a good summer for me. You know, I got a bunch of offers, all that Great kind of summer. stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the ESPN rankings came out and now that was one of my goals to make the top 100, um, you know, ESPN. And so boom, rankings come out. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, like seeing Zion, I see Zion, RJ at the top. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not, I'm not up there. And so I keep scrolling and I'm like, I'm like, where's my name? And boom. I'm number 100. No! I'm number 100. So, but, but I have a question. I know that you're, like I said, you're a student of the game. Mm-hmm. When you see those guys, like you said, the Zion, the Zion Williamson, the RJ Barrett's in the pros, how do you feel like your game can match up to them? Because eventually, I believe that you're a pro. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I believe that Miller Cop is a pro. Somebody mm-hmm. could ask me, I said, one kid, 2018 class, Who's going pro, Miller Cop? When you see the guys like that that you've seen from afar, what? Yeah. How does that up your work ethic? Knowing that you guys, you got your class of 2018, yeah. guys are starting to transition to that pro lifestyle. What does that do for you? No, it's it's cool to see because it's like you're you were those in that same group with those guys. But I mean, you look at Zion and RJ. I'm not I'm not worried about them. You know, they're in their own boat. But like. For me, it was like other like the guys, you know, thirty and down. It was like, okay, well, you know, why are you know I use them, you know, that as like motivation. Like I have, for instance, that rankings. So I printed those out as soon as as I saw those in high school. I printed them out. That's the middle of my wall. Right <laughs> it's in my wall. It's actually in my room right now, taped to my wall. And so it's it's funny to to see like where guys are now and and who's who like stopped working who um you know kind of fell off and all that kind of stuff so um I use that as motivation for me because it's just like you know at at some point somebody's gonna get passed up and it's not gonna be me uh was part of your fuel your motivation is not to be the next Austin Grandstaff (laughs) <laughs> I really think that you really took that as an insult, man. I, I don't know how you felt at the time, but like Austin Grandstaff. <laughs> no, at the time, at the time, I was like, oh man, yeah, I was like, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> I mean, he went to Ohio State. He was like, you know, top one hundred kid, like you know, could hoop, 
and then I I just kind of forgot about him and mm-hmm. forgot about it. So I don't really <laughs> think of it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah um, your family. Like I said, the greatest, one of the greatest athletic, if not the greatest athletic family that ever blessed Houston. We 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 know about pops. I love moms. Tell moms that I'm coming to see her. <laughs> I tell, 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 tell moms that I'm coming to see her because she always appreciates my work. That's one person. Every time she sees me, she she always appreciates appreciates me. But before we talk about your brothers, talk about your parents because I say your parents probably had the toughest job in America being you guys' parents. <laughs> like yeah. Vanderbilt, Northwestern, Lamar. Yeah. And then you still got Maddox in high school. Talk yeah. about your parents, man. Just talk about your parents. Man, they did it all. You know, my my parents, they they, they figured it out. And they're still – if you ask them, they're still figuring it out. But – uh. Um, no, they're, they're awesome. You know, my dad was, you know, one thing, you know, I say about my dad is he's, he's not going to not go a hundred percent at something. So it's like one of us said like, Oh, we want to, you know, dad, I want to play, you know, baseball right now. I want to play baseball. and like be the best baseball player I can be like, all right, we'd be out there like hitting balls all night, you know, till it goes dark. And so whatever it was, it was like, he was, he was there, you know, to, to, you know, make sure that we had, um, you know, the opportunity, um, you know, to make something happen. That was the biggest thing I think for me from him and my mom is they made, you know, you know, they wanted to just put us in the right spot. And if we failed, then we failed. If we succeeded, then, you know, we succeeded and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty cool. And my mom, I mean, she wakes up at like five in the morning to, um, you know, help us, you know, you know, get ready for, uh, school in terms of like, you know, cooking grilled chicken for us. And like, so we have enough protein or whatever it is. Like she, Debbie, I'm telling you, she, you legendary. Know, yeah. <laughs> so it's like every, you know, everything you could think of, it's like, they, they, you know, put together, um, you know, a place for us to kind of grow and succeed and learn and, you know, try new things, which is, which is awesome. The brothers, Brayden, yeah. Anderson, Maddox. Yes. Who is the best shooter in the house, man? Oh, man. I'm going to say me. Absolutely. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're going to say you. Okay. Uh, Why not even ask that? Because, of course, you're going to say that. One yeah. through four, if you have to say best shooter. But I'm going to say Brady got the best bank shots. I don't care. Nobody got the bank <laughs> shots. Like the best bank shots. If we're going bank shots, it's Brayden number one for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna say me at number one. I'm gonna say Anderson at number two, Maddox at number three, and Braden at number four. But Anderson and Maddox very close. I'm not gonna lie. But Anderson, yeah, he can really shoot. <laughs> Anderson can shoot. Yeah. But, oh, only, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. The only thing I can, I'm, I'm, I'm iffy to, to, you know, put him close to me is that his his. Um, she had a, was in a little bit of a slump this year at Lamar early early on. So until he until he you know figures it out a hundred percent, I'm gonna say me. Most athletic. Oh, see that's that one's up for debate now because Maddox is really really. That's famous. what I'm saying, Maddox. That's what I just said. Like I was like, I I can't lie, man. Like oh, Maddox. Maddox is bouncy. He's yeah. he, he can move some force. That I'm yeah. not I'm not gonna lie about yeah, that. Yeah, so, 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 so. I don't know. We we need to. It's tough right now because there's no gym. So we need to get to get the gym and and. But okay, but but if you had the one through four, I want to know the one through four because if you say you again, I want to know. I, I need to know how many dunks you had this year, Miller. I need well, to know. I don't have any dunks. Oh damn! <laughs> I didn't have any dunks. Not this year, but. Um, I would still say myself. I have to say myself. Who is two? Maddox is two? Maddox is two, for sure. But, hey, listen. Yeah. I don't know if he, Anderson can really jump like that, so he really might be four. He, he might, might be four. Might, Brayden, we're, talking, might. we're talking prime time basketball. Braden might be higher. Braden <laughs> might be three when he was in high school. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm going to say – I'm going to – no, I'm going to give it a tie at three. <laughs> Anderson and Braden. He's not going to like that, though. Best handles. Me, <laughs> Me absolutely. You? Oh, not yeah. Maddox? No, not Maddox, not Maddox. Maddox is the best passer. You think so? He's the best passer. Not- I think so. Ooh. Last yeah. one. Best defender. Uh, one thing about cops is we don't really play defense. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe. But how is? But the thing about it is, you say you don't play defense, but how was that changing for you in the Big Ten, though? Like, yeah, no, the- that was that was a huge adjustment because in AAU and high school, it's like you can take off plays on defense. You don't have to really do anything defensively, and so you're coming into this this game where it's like there's so many schemes, there's so many you know, you know, good athletes and, and you got to work on, you got to know what angles to take, what, uh, where to force guys, all that kind of stuff. So it was a huge jump for me because I, I had one of my favorite coaches who coached me is coach Billy Donlin. He's a head coach at UMKC now, and he was a big defensive guy. And he, he taught me so much about defense and we'd be doing slides before practice and after practice and all that kind of stuff. So it was a huge, huge jump for me because I, I will say that, uh, you know, a coach told me when I was asking him, you know, talking to him before, um, you know, I got to college about, you know, one of the tips. Um, I was like, what are you, you know, as a freshman coming into college, um, what's something that you would you would tell me, um, you know, before I got there? And he said, and he's a coach at, uh, I won't say, I don't know why, but, you know, I just, he's, you know, a coach at a, at a, you know, good big time university in uh, Texas. And so he was like, you know, um, you know, once a coach trusts you on defense, he'll trust you on offense. So that was something that I kept in mind and, and try to earn, you know, a coach's trust in on defense first. How do you turn around a season knowing that you guys said that you're that you guys were a young team, but at but next season you guys are gonna be some elder statesmen, even though you're yeah. gonna be a junior. But yeah. like, how do you turn around a younger team? Because to me, Miller, all all of your basketball career that I've known you and watched you, you've turned around teams and became successful. Like I said, yeah. Houston Christian, you guys finally went over to Hope and won the SBC title. Mm-hmm. Now, now this is a different challenge. Now, like how do you turn around a team knowing that you still got the upper echelons of the Big Tens, like I said, the Indianas, the Michigan States, the Michigans, the Ohio States, they're not going anywhere. So you, as one of the the leaders, because I see you're taking more of a vocal role, what is the message do you deliver next season? Because at the end of the day, Miller, as much as you've gotten better, there's one thing I know about you, you love to win. And I know that you're not going to take losing lightly. How do you, and especially in the Big Ten, how do how do you buy in? I mean, you just gotta. I mean, the thing we, that was that was against us is this year is obviously, you know, we couldn't we couldn't finish out games. There were four or five games where we we were up, you know, three to four minutes um, left in the game, up by six, up by five. You know, we got to be able to close those games out. And um, I mean, it was it was. Um, it was a tough season because it was like we felt like we should have won those games and, and, you know, made our record look a little bit better than it was. But, um, you know, the biggest thing for us as a team is 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 just being tough and being mentally strong and, and um, you know, getting better in the areas that we know we have to get better at. During, during this quarantine time, of course, where everybody's – the coronavirus is happening. What are you yeah. actually though telling your team? Because at the end of the day, like I said, you're a leader. You're a guy that wants to win just as much as anybody. The most fierce competitor that I know. Like, like I, I, I think a fierce competitor. I think of you. What do you tell your team during this time? Even though you know you can't get in the gym and shoot like yeah. you want to, but you can do little things like run or lift that extra weight. What yeah. are you telling? So, what are you telling your team as in that perspective? No, we're we've been talking over the break and stuff, and when you know we had our you know after the season we took some time off, like a week, uh, you know, a week or so off, and so you know we're just we're just staying in shape, you know, talking to each other about what we're doing every day. Some guys um, live in like New York, so they can't even go outside, like so they've been having to either go outside, like um, 
like a dead night or no one's out there and like get some running in or, or work out there or they're just doing, you know, 200 pushups in their house or, or, you know, other guys don't really have, don't have any gym or like a, you know, a goal or near them. So they're doing, uh, you know, sprints or like ball handling, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it, it depends on each guy and each, they're, they're each, each of their situations. Uh, but we're, we're staying in contact. We're making sure everybody's doing something uh, because we know this is time to to improve and not time just to just to sit down and, and chill. Um, one thing I want to actually kind of touch on too before we go. A lot of guys in this city of Houston that's from class of eighteen and just all over the NCAA. The transfer portal transferring what what's your take on that guys transferring left and right because at the end of the day i remember actually talking to your mom like maybe a year ago uh -huh. and we sat and talked to you like that's one thing that we try not to do we try to we yeah. in the recruitment process we're trying to find fit and longevity so yeah. like you knowing that you average four points your freshman year and you probably yeah. look at it like am i really gonna play am i really yeah. gonna play what made you stay the course and then and, and not and, and just to make sure like you stay where you're at, which is Northwestern? Yeah, no. The I mean, the thing is the transfer portal, I mean, it's it's like a record number again this year. So yeah. I mean obviously there's there's so many K different case of why why Yeah, because I can understand yeah. grad grad transfer. I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll take I'll take that out. I'll take that out. But yeah. like you yeah. know gonna... Yeah, but there I mean, even guys like from our class of of you know 2018 there's so many guys that have transferred and left and and um i think a lot of it is just um i don't know i don't want to speak for any anybody else but i just think that sometimes you get um not fooled in the recruiting process but maybe you hear things that you want to hear and don't um you know hear the things that you that you wouldn't want to hear and and you kind of go off what you want to hear um and that's tough. That's tough for anybody. It's tougher. If you think about it, it's tough for an 18 year old kid to decide on what, what school to go to when you've got 20 different schools telling you the same thing or telling you, you know, all, all, um, what you want to hear. I mean, it's tough. It's a tough decision for a kid to make who's 18 years old and they have to decide where they want to go to college for four years. But I mean, so many kids transfer outside of basketball. It's just, you know, uh, because they make the wrong decision in two, whether it's just like they don't like the school, they don't like the state they're in, they don't like the, um, you know, the classes or whatever. So, like, regular students can transfer all they want, too. So, it's like in basketball, it's just like more of a, a spotlight on it yeah. because, you know, guys, they think it's just because of basketball, but sometimes it's more than that. But uh, for me, though, it was mainly, um, you know, understanding that, yeah, I averaged four points a game, but I felt like there was so much more for me to grow. There's so much more for me to show um, that, you know, some guys were leaving. You know, we had, you know, two pros leave, you know, a guy who plays, you know, is a two-way player for the Magic right now, a guy who's playing in Europe. Um, uh, so it's like, you know, there was – I could see opportunity, uh, you know, coming to light, and that was something for me is because, you know, just like – you know, my parents always try to give me, it's just an opportunity, a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And so I just had to make the most of it. So that was something for me that I saw as I saw an opportunity, you know, be able to possibly arise. And so I, I, I uh, you know, made sure to stay, stay the course and, and, and make the most of my opportunity. The, um, can you stress the importance to the viewers of being a student athlete? Because I think I, I've been trying to ask that question, especially you're in college now. And yeah. like I said, like you go to a prestigious university, one of the one of the most prestigious university in the country. So just stress the importance of, of, of yeah. the student and then the athlete. No, it's huge, man. I mean, there's – I mean, we've had guys, you know, some alum from Northwestern, you know, who played basketball, a guy, uh, Billy McKinney, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if people are familiar. I was, I didn't know of him yeah. until, you know, he came uh, and spoke to us and, and I got to talk to him for, for a little bit. And he was just saying how, uh, um, you know, he played in the league for eight years, but, you know, his ability to, you know, to have connections and stuff outside of basketball 
is what really made him, you know, successful. I mean, he's the mayor of his hometown right now. He's, um, he was like a, a, you know, worked in the front office of like multiple NBA teams. And so without an education, without, you know, being able to, um, uh, be able to, you know, get through school and, and excel in that area, you know, he wouldn't be, uh, you know, where he was today. And so that was a cool example for me that kind of really showed, you know, what being a good student and, and taking that seriously does. Uh, but I would, I really, you know, stress the importance. If I could talk to every dude in high school who's slacking in school or like whatever it is, like take it serious. It really, Listen, I, I, I coach – a, a room full of middle schoolers. So one day you don't have to come. We're just gonna do this Zoom like this. And I'm yeah. gonna let you talk to them because yeah, absolutely. every every year is it, 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 it's great. So like like I understand. Exactly. And um, my other thing is you have like I said, you have three brothers. So you've heard the advice from older brothers. And yeah. You have you you give the advice to younger brothers. So yeah. what's that like? What do you what do you receive from Braden? But yeah. what what else do you give to Anderson and Maddox? Yeah, no, it's it's a cool dynamic, you know, being in the middle of of, mm-hmm. of an older brother and two younger brothers. So it's like, you know, he's given me so much advice of of you know in terms of high school when I was in high school, in terms of when I was a freshman, you know, how to operate, um, you know, how to you know find a schedule in college, you know, how to uh, you know, make time for, uh, make time for your, your extra work, make time for your school and all that kind of stuff. And so I've been able to pass down, you know, some stuff to Anderson and Maddox in terms of just, just how to work and how to, um, and for Anderson, especially, you know, um, you know, me being in college for, you know, two years now and playing two seasons, you know, when he started playing this year at Lamar and he was playing a lot so I could, you know, watch his games on Synergy and, you know, I'd watch him and, and you know, send him clips of and, and screenshots of his film and his shot and his certain plays and stuff. So, you know, I always try to, like, stay in touch with him with that because that was some that's something that we always can can relate on because, you know, it's a it's a perfect medium and with Maddox, too, it's you know, he's going to go through the recruiting process with football. And so, you know, being able to help him with that, you know, when it gets crazy, you know, like mine was and, and how to handle all the coaches and, you know, what questions to ask and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's stuff I'm looking forward to, you know, kind of sharing with them and, and him and continue to, you know, lead by example too, because that's something that, you know, not many people, you know, take into account is that you know, it's easier to say it, but it's it's harder to do it three part question for the last question. All right. Top five players in the NBA right now. Oh gosh. All right. Oh, it right. really is a four part question. I'm sorry. Top five players in the NBA right now. Top five players of all time in the NBA. Since you're in college, give me your top five college players. <laughs> okay. And then give me four guys that you would love to run with. I've been I've been interviewing high school players, so I said so. I always give me their class, but you're two years removed, so you could give me some college players. that you're like, damn. If you, you, Do they have to, or they have to be from Houston? The the guys I'd want to run with. No, they don't have to be from Houston. Oh, anybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. 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 Yeah, All, right. Yeah. All right. This is tough. But 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 the guys you got to run with, they have to be in college though. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um. All right. So, top five NBA. I'm going LeBron James. LeBron. I'm going Giannis. Giannis. James Harden. James Harden. Kawhi. Kawhi. Okay. Oh man, that's tough. Who else am I missing too? I know there's some what some other because, guys. Because we all know that Katie is injured, so we Katie and Steph yeah, are injured. Yeah. So injured got. Injured guys don't count, right? Yeah, they don't count. Like Charles okay. I'm gonna say We wanna say Anthony Davis? I was thinking Anthony Davis, but I don't know. I feel like that's a cop out. <laughs> I'm gonna say well, I'm just thinking all the all stars. Yeah, I mean I gotta say Anthony Davis. <laughs> saying Anthony Davis. Top five players of all time. All right, so I'm saying Jordan. Jordan. Kobe. Kobe. LeBron. LeBron. 
Is this an order? No, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, we got six, eight, <laughs> five. I, this is tough. So don't – I don't want anybody to get mad at me if I forget any or, or, or I make a bad list because it's off the top. So Jordan Cole, uh, I'm saying Kareem. Kareem. And – Who am I missing? Give me some names. Just rattle some off. Olajuwon, Magic, Bird, um, Oscar Robinson, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, uh, Tim Duncan. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, okay, okay. David, David Robinson. Uh, let's see, Charles Barkley. But I'm trying to. I'm not trying to name the guys that don't have rings. They like probably not going to really. Yeah. All right. So then the next one, though, I'm not naming Shaq. Okay, Shaq. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I'm a Hakeem guy because I because okay. I think because. I think Hakeem is greatest offensive center and greatest de- defensive center. So like, right. it's more like so I'm a dream. But I got, I can, I can, I can roll with Shaq, All top right. five college players, and, and you got to actually lace me up because I only really watch the people that I know this year. I know about that kid from C- Seton Hall and Marquette. I know they they went to work this year, but I really didn't really catch mm-hmm. that much because th- to me, honestly, too many of these guys are just going pro. So it's just hard to like it, like you gonna catch him like one yeah. season. So I don't think college basketball was where it was at when you had the Adam Morrison's and the JJ Reddicks yeah. and stuff like that. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So since Kevin Durant and everybody busted up one year, yeah. you know, oh. so so five college players from this past season. Oh uh, yeah, your top five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll probably say I gotta go with. Cassius Winston. Okay. Played him twice. It's a very good. Okay. Very good player. Uh, I'm going to go with Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin. Okay. Dayton. Okay. I mean, the stuff that I saw him do is ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to say Miles Powell. Okay. Saw him play like three or four games. In Seton Hall? Seton Hall. Okay. Crazy stuff yeah. he did. I'm going to say – Another Big Ten guy, Luca Garza, who was also a Player of the Year candidate. What, what school? Big guy, Big Ten, like six or six eleven, okay. average like twenty four a game. Um, was that three or four? I think that's four. I think you got one more. Mm. Oh, what's a kid's name from uh, uh, St. Mary's? Jordan Ford. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jordan Ford. I saw him play. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He is tough. He's tough. Yeah. Um, and um, besides, I'm not gonna add myself in there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, I know, I know. Uh, okay, well, you got four since your right. yourself is in there for who you want to run with. All right. Are you Are you gonna take off here? Absolutely. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I told him he better do this interview. He said he's going to do it. So I said, Ben, <laughs> ben so I said, you going to take some beer? That's first pick. Yeah. I, I, are y'all still close? Are y'all or like? Yeah. yeah. No, we text and, and uh, you know, all the time. And you know, we would be working out right now over the break. But, you know, with everything that's going on, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so I'm taking Sabir. For sure. Because I know how much love and respect you have for him. I know, I know yeah. there's sometimes you're like, God damn, just give him my point guard. He can put the ball right on the money. He knows what I like. Like, I know there are just some times that you didn't yeah. have to even say nothing. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> – then I think the second one is going to be Anderson because I would just like to play with my brother. Okay. That would be pretty cool. So I'm play Savir, Anderson, me. Um – Who's it the four? Hmm. I'm going with I'm thinking of who I'm playing. Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you before I wanted to tell you when I interviewed Kendrick Davis, I, I did him I for him I I told him to choose like the 2018s out of the city. He actually chose you too. Uh, he did? <laughs> yeah, he did. Right. He, 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 chose, he chose you. He chose right. you. Hey, I appreciate that, Kendrick. 
<laughs> you said, I, 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 would, him, yeah. I would pick Kendrick, but I mean, I already got a point guard. Yeah, you got Sabir, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, hey, listen, I'm not going to even argue that. That's like, he's, you going to fight for some Sabir. I still remember that one question I asked you, too. I was just like, can your brother overtake Sabir's number one player in the city? You looked at me, you said, yeah, well, that's going to be a tough act. Like, like, like he's uh-huh. very, very tough. <laughs> yeah. Are you surprised at what he's doing? Are you surprised? Sure. Or like, like at Georgia? Because a lot of people thought, like, no way. I'm not surprised at all. I was, I was, I mean, there's so much work that we put in that he yeah. put in. It's like, I knew like no matter the stage, he was going to do his thing. And that was no, like, I no doubt about it in my mind. So like, you knew he could put him anywhere, any conference in the country, you know, he was going to succeed. Yes. Against anybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I still need my two more. I still need my two. Yeah. Mm. I'm going. Who else? Who am I playing for? Oh, I'm going with my dan- my man, uh, Daniel Ut- uh, Utomi. Oh, USC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm going with him for sure. And then uh, go small ball, I guess. And then uh, wh- who else do we have? And then, and then you know what? I'll go Obi Toppin at the five. That's okay. a good team right there. Hey, listen, hey, listen. Four Houston guys and, and, and a Dayton guy, I'll take it. I man. appreciate it, man. Throw out your Twitter handle on Instagram. I know you're not really all into that stuff, but go ahead and throw it out. Anyway. At, at, it's at Miller Cop or at underscore uh, Miller Cop. <laughs> Twitter You'll and Instagram. Me. Twitter and Instagram. You'll find me. Man, yeah. I appreciate it, Miller. This is the easy corner. Yes, sir. Follow me on Instagram at the easy corner. And follow me on Twitter at easy underscore corner one. I'm here with the Big Ten Conference, Northwestern sophomore, the shooter, Mr. Houston's finest, <laughs> Miller Cop. Appreciate it, man. It's going to be on YouTube. I'm going to send it to you. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. All man. right, man.